Shall we? Have you read the passage? A very short passage, easy to understand, simple language. You should be able to answer all the questions. We'll see the first one. What is the first one? This passage best supports the statement that we'll check every option. What is the first option here? The Egyptians used a stone quarried many miles away from the pyramid site. True or not true? Have you read the passage? Then you have to respond. That's what the passage says. Second one, the pyramids of Miso America were built to last for eternity. Not correct. That goes with Egyptian pyramids. So mark the second one wrong. Third one, the Egyptian pyramids were public tombs. No, tombs of pharaohs, the kings. Mark it wrong. The Egyptian and Mesoamerican pyramids were built during the same time period. Not correct. Different time period. So mark that also wrong. Mesoamericans shared the same basic design function to Egyptians. This is also wrong. Different design patterns. So what is the answer based on that? The first option is the answer. How many of you have chosen the first option? Hmm. Simple, easy to answer, not a big deal. I think that is the second question, am I right? Sir? Ah, you should have told me, but we'll go to the first one now. The main idea of this passage is best to summed up which statement. What is the first one here? Pyramids in Egypt and Mesoamerica are similar. Passage talks about to some extent similar, but how are they different? Distinct differences are found. So you cannot consider this one. Second option, Egyptians assisted Mesoamerican. They don't belong to the same time period. They, they were not contemporaries. So mark the first one wrong, second one wrong. Third one, pyramids in Egypt and Mesoamerica have distinct differences. What is the object of the passage to bring out the differences between, distinct differences between these two? Hold this one. Scientists do not know who built the pyramids. Does he talk about that? None of these. But answer is quite obvious. What is the answer here? Third option is the answer. Distinct differences. Easy to answer. We have already done the second one. So I will go to the third one. Question number three. The passage best supports the statement that Egyptian and Mesoamerican pyramids share the same design function. No. Both pyramids were used as temples of ritual and celebration? No. Mesoamerica, they used for ritual and celebration. Egyptian, they used for the tombs as tombs of pharaohs or kings. Egyptian and Mesoamerican pyramids shared the same construction methods? No. Mesoamerican pyramids were used for ritual and celebration? True. Mesoamerican pyramids were private tombs? No, not correct. That goes with Egyptian pyramids. So what is the answer here? The fourth option is the answer. This is also easy to answer. We'll go to the next one. Question number four. The underlined word eternity. Underline the word eternity. It hasn't been underlined. In the passage, most nearly means which of the following. That means you have to look for the synonym. Is it for a short time? Eternal means what? Forever. You all know the meaning of the word eternal. Forever. So what is the answer based on that? Not the first one, not the second one, not the third one, not the fifth one. For all time. But generally we don't say, please write uh, eternal. Eternal we say forever. Write that word. We don't say for all time. That is not the right expression. Eternal means forever. Eternity. Forever. And what is the last word here? Transient. Write the meaning of that also. Transient also means temporary. Short-lived. Write uh, two expressions. One is uh, temporary. The other one, short-lived. L-I-V-E-D. Short-lived. Short-lived means uh, temporary. Simple. Same meaning. Shall I go to the next one? Question number five. Oh, only four questions. Based on the passage. Who has got all the four correct? Now, this, this passage is easy. should not be a problem. Only thing you have to read the passage. The next two set of questions deal with what? Close test. Again, a short paragraph. And what is this paragraph about? It is about church and it is about uh, religious, but more about Christianity and church. You should get all correct. You can answer all. We'll see the first one. 
it was sunday and the bells uh, and the bells ringing for church underline the word ringing will you say bell also underline the word bells bells singular or plural then can you consider is was being beam so what is the answer ah, today you are in high spirits very good keep it up answer is a bells were ringing which tense is that past continuous tense the bells were ringing for the church as the people went in john followed them he heard god's word joined in singing the psalms and listened the verb listen underline the verb listen and that's an important combination the verb listen always takes a preposition to i listen to music i listen to the master i expect that from you okay so what is the answer based on that the very first option listen to someone or something listen to the preacher underline the word preacher first you write the word teacher you all know the meaning of the word teacher who is a teacher the one who teaches a subject below that you write the word preacher preacher also teaches but write the meaning one who teaches religious stuff or one who teaches religion one who teaches religion we use the word preacher one who teaches a subject teacher have you got the meaning we'll go to the next one question number 7 or blank number 7 uh it seemed to him just as if he were in his own church please underline as if he were this is an important expression and write two expressions in your notebook first you write the expression as if and below that you write as though when you use these two expressions whatever the subject irrespective of the subject you have to use a primary auxiliary to be be in the past plural form what is the plural form were you have to use were even for third person singular even for first person singular write one example then you understand she always behaves she always behaves as if she always behaves as if i write this one first as if she was the boss as if she was the boss as though she was the boss is this right or wrong mark it wrong here what is the subject third person singular if you are not aware of the rule then you think it is right but here irrespective of the subject we have to use were so what is the correct word here she were same pattern in the passage we'll go to the pattern uh, passage here what is the subject as if he he is also third person singular what do you expect was but because of this as if we have to use uh, he were that you have to recollect and consolidate in his own church where he had been christened and had underlined the word had many of these are easy after i had there are two possibilities had goes with past tense i had a car means now i don't have that is past tense but generally have has had they go with perfect tenses that means the verb should be in which form past participle form so how many options here in past participle form only one which one is that sing sang sung loud in them sing sang sung what is the past participle sung so what is the answer third option is the answer easy or difficult very good we'll go to the next one john thought of his father's grave which he knew at last would like these would underline the word would answer my question which part of speech is it it is a helping verb after any helping verb you have to use a verb it should be in which form bare infinitive how many options in bare infinitive only one which one is that answer is a would look simple easy to answer shall i go to the next one blank number 9 am i right uh then he set to work pulled up the high grass this is a clue for you underline the high grass raised the wooden crosses which had fallen down 
and replace the reeds, underline the word reeds. I'll give the meanings later, which had been. Again, when you see have been, has been, had been, the verb should be in which form? Past participle form. That goes with passive voice. So how many options here in past participle form? Only one. Which one is that? But what is the verb here? Blow. And past blue. And past participle blown. Which one is that? Is that the last one? Who has got all the five correct? Wonderful. Four or five? Four. That's really good. Please write uh, the meaning of the word uh, wreath. I told you to underline. Remember? A wreath means, first I will explain. Imagine some, some president or prime minister from some other country has come to our country. Uh, in the capital city, usually what they do, they go to the Rajgat and they try to pay homage to the father of the country, the nation. So what do they do? They place something made of flowers and leaves and circular in shape. Have you ever noticed? There are two things. One is, imagine these are all flowers. I'm not an artist. Visualize. And you place it. What is that called? It is called a garland. You all know the word garland. But here what they do, they use something that is circular in shape and made of leaves and flowers. That is known as a wreath. How do you pronounce it? A wreath. Please write that. The circular floral thing. The circular floral thing. F-L-O-R-A-L. Floral means what? Made of flowers. You all know that. Floral thing. Placed as a mark of respect. Placed as a mark of respect. Have I told you to underline any other word? Underline the word. I said uh, underline high grass, but not that one. Underline the word weed. That's an important word for two reasons. In English, sometimes we come across words. The same word can be a noun, can be a verb. That's not a big deal. But as a noun, it has a negative meaning. As a verb, it has a positive meaning. There are two words which are very important from the exam point of view. One of those two words, first one is weed. First you write the word weed, and brackets you write the word noun, and write the meaning. Weed means unwanted plant. Unwanted plant in a garden. In a garden, you want to have plants of your choice, obviously. But sometimes unwanted plants, they come up. What are those plants called? Weeds. Weed has many meanings. Those who take drugs, when I say weed, they think of something else. Don't go that side. Okay. So you, here, is it positive or negative? Negative. Now, you, again, you write the word weed and bracket, you write a verb. And write the meaning, positive meaning. It means to remove. To remove weeds. Means what? To remove unwanted plants. Positive. I hope you are listening carefully. Oh, very good. Thank you. So, there is another word which is equally important. Have you copied this? Uh, write the word dust. First bracket, you write noun. There is a lot of dust here. You all know that. Noun or verb? Noun. But dust as a verb, it has a positive meaning. I write one example. She has, she has dusted. She has dusted the table. When you are not aware of the exact meaning as a verb, when you look at a sentence like this, like this, what will you think? She has dusted the table means she has uh, spoiled the table with a lot of dust. That's what you think. But here it means she has removed the dust. Have you got the meaning? So these two words you have to remember. Shall I go to the next one? Fine. But uh, please write one word. I don't know how many of you know. Because of the context, I'm giving this word. The context goes with uh, church, grave also one word grave and Christianity if you take when someone dies what they do they put the body in a wooden box and they lower that wooden box the, the name of that wooden box is coffin so please write the word coffin and write the meaning wooden box 
in which the dead body the dead body is kept wooden box in which the dead body is kept that box is called coffin that's also an important word sometimes so shall i go to the next set of questions what do they deal with ah uh, i would like to i'm rather curious i would like to know the order you have chosen but here you can get uh, one you can get four and five two and three if you have to go with the key there's a problem we'll decide whether it is uh, two and three the correct order i will ask you question you have to respond we'll take the elimination approach can you consider the first one the victorious king can it be the first sentence say yes or no thereby can it be the first one no mahadevi is a princess whose father seems to be the first one hold that one can you any contrasting word can it be the first one no and any pronoun can it be the first one so what is the first one here c is the first one easy to get and uh, second one and the third one they go hand in hand and you have to consider both here the first one talks about a battle in that battle the king one king got defeated the other king became victorious now there are two sentences you can consider one is a and the other one is d either second one should be a or second one should be d the key says it is d a check the key once what does the key say d a but i don't agree what is the reason here if you take d to the second position then there is no continuity if you place a in the third position instead of that let us try the other way c is the first one and it is about uh, the king is defeated in battle after that someone won the battle then specific we have to use a definite article the so what do you what do you see here the victorious king underline the victorious king has an adopted daughter and a son that is also a clue the first sentence talks about princess whose father got killed then the victorious king has a daughter and a son obviously whether adopted or real daughter son that king may not invite some other girl because daughter age do you understand what i say because of that a contrasting word what is a contrasting word despite this despite this means what despite the fact that the victorious king has an adopted daughter and son despite that he invited this girl do you understand what i say so which one is logically right ad or da ad is beyond any doubt the correct order ad because here despite this does not go with defeating a king it goes with in spite of the fact that he has a daughter he has a son he invited someone else's daughter to stay with him so what is the second one based on that after that it is easy his senior commander karna karan is attracted to mahadevi but she rejects him and what is the last one or uh, what are, what are you left with thereby she earns his wrath means anger underline the word wrath means anger so continuity is there she rejected obviously that fellow must have got annoyed and she had to face his anger do you see the continuity yes what is the next one based on that e and after that d who has got this order raise your hands not too many how many of you have got the first one raise your hands okay how many of you have got e and b fourth and fifth raise your hands rather easy but i think something went wrong uh, a d uh, d a you must have thought cannot be because of the word despite this when shall i go to the next one this paper you have to get uh, 15 plus at any cost have you heard what i said if not if not i don't want to complete uh, 15 plus at this stage you have to get let us see how many questions till 15th or till 14th we'll go to the next set what are these about 
a new pattern i suppose here you three you see three sentences all of them may be right one may be right two may be right you have to look at the sentences and decide what is required here one thing you have to be good at english grammar obviously second you have to have some sort of contextual awareness we'll take each one and check right or wrong what is the first one here the tournament was cancelled midway through there should have been a full stop so is it right or wrong what do you think how many of you say it is right raise your hands how many of you think it is wrong raise your hands only a few absolutely no problem the tournament was cancelled past tense passive voice and underline midway through one unit it's a standard expression nothing wrong with that midway through means while the tournament was going on in the middle of the tournament they cancelled it that's what it means have you got the meaning and absolutely no problem grammatically contextually and the standard phrase as well tick the first one it is right each team selected a squad of 15 players per the world cup exclude reserves or excluding reserves exclude reserves is not correct what is the right word here please write the word excluding here we have to use the correct word form what is the correct word form excluding reserves reserve players that means it is wrong the tournament will take place from 4th march to 3rd april 2022 do you find any error here no error whatsoever that means uh, a is right so is c what is the answer based on that second option only a and c ah oh, please first one you want me to explain here there are two components first component the tournament was cancelled first you ask yourself is there any error here actual sentence in active voice they cancelled the tournament change it to passive voice the tournament was cancelled by them by them not important we don't mention so this part there is no error now you ask a question when was it cancelled you get possible answers it was cancelled yesterday it was cancelled before the match started it was cancelled while the match was going on possible answers simple english what will you say it was cancelled while the match was on it was cancelled while the match was going on that is simple english anyone can understand effective english for the same idea we use the expression it was cancelled midway through midway through is a standard expression standard phrase it means what while something was going on something happened what happened they cancelled the match so this is one part the tournament was cancelled one part pause as a question when was it cancelled what is the answer midway through that means what while it was going on now it is clear sure fine shall i go to the next one question number 16 for to go as a passenger you must need a purse ignore the punctuation at least or put a please use a full stop here next one it should have been there i don't know how many of you uh, got this right if you got this right highly appreciable do you think how many of you have chosen this to be right raise your hands 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 wonderful nothing wrong with this but you may ask sir how come all of you underline the word for above that you write because write the word because or write the word <coughs> since please write the word since let us go with a familiar word what is a familiar word here because because to go as a passenger you must need a purse you can express that way or you can also say because you must need a purse to go as a passenger <coughs> even that you could say but here better expression because pause to go as a passenger <coughs> excuse me to go as a passenger you must need a purse so nothing wrong with this tick the first one <coughs> please excuse me second one a purse is but a rag underline the word purse 
underline the word rag unless you have something in it underline the word unless this is also a bit difficult a regular pattern we say a purse is nothing but please write that expression as well a purse is nothing but <coughs> nothing but <coughs> a small pouch i'm using a new word <coughs> A purse is nothing but a small pouch. One way to express. Based on that, here, do you see the word nothing? Answer my question. With nothing or without nothing, it is right. No problem. But generally, we use the word nothing. Is that clear? A purse is pause, but a rag unless you have something in it. Purse is but a rag unless you have something in it. How many of you have chosen B also right? please raise your hands a few students not too many we'll go to the third one the pure compound is colorless no problem but older sample underline the word sample sample is singular or plural singular it is in present tense then will you say tend to acquire or tends to acquire so add the letter s that means c is not correct hope you are listening carefully based on that what is the answer a and b answer not easy not at all easy in my opinion especially the second one you'll get stuck because you think of the word nothing with nothing without nothing it is right i told you to underline a few words what is the first one here please write the word purse <clears throat> and write one example i lost my purse yesterday please excuse me i got stuck choked so i lost my purse yesterday i lost my purse yesterday now you have to respond i'll be asking you a question imagine this has been said by a boy or a man this has been said the statement i lost my purse yesterday said by a man or a boy is it right or wrong how many of you say wrong raise your hands of uh, this side more it is wrong please mark it wrong a guy cannot use the word purse purse goes with ladies girls and ladies and what is the right word the guy has to use please change it to i lost my wallet yesterday purse goes with ladies wallet goes with guys what we keep in the pocket is a wallet not a purse a lot of people make a mistake when it comes to these two words and one more thing in the past when we would go to a bank we would see a small board inside the bank outside the bank as well it would go this way beware of pickpocketers have you ever seen something like that so please write the word pickpocketers singular pickpocketer plural pickpocket is this right or wrong you see in banks mind you it is wrong mark it wrong there is no word like pickpocketer the right word is please write pickpocket they should write beware of pickpockets not pickpocketers pickpocket singular pickpockets plural I write two sentences it can be a verb it can be a noun so please write two sentences the first one i saw a pickpocket yesterday i saw a pickpocket yesterday i saw a pickpocket yesterday common error i saw a pickpocketer yesterday wrong you got the first one here is it a noun or a verb underline and write noun write the second example i will use the tab have a look my pocket was picked yesterday here we have separated my pocket was picked yesterday pick pocket noun but someone picked my pocket here is it a noun or a verb so underline 
my pocket was what was picked here it is a verb people usually don't say but standard english this is what you are supposed to say i hope you got some new words shall i go to the next one any other word here what is the meaning of the word acquire acquire means to get acquire the skill acquire knowledge underline the word unless and put a star mark a lot of students ask me and in exams have given many a time first you write the word unless then you write the word until then you write the word till these two one pair please write all the three very important they have given so many times unless goes with function contrast so please write here it expresses a contrast unless expresses a contrast bracket you write negative word it's a negative word negative word i'll give an example some students ask me sir what is the difference between until and till can you answer that question not on my behalf on your behalf what is the difference don't tell me the spelling is different how many of you say no difference whatsoever raise your hands very good today more respond a lot of guys are responding very good a pleasant surprise please uh, tick nothing wrong and uh, absolutely no difference if at all you want to know the difference why two words old english we would use a word until is any problem audio problem am so old english here you write old english from until we got till modern english meaning wise no difference have you got it and these two express unless expresses a contrast and these two words express time please write time until till they go with the time unless contrast and why is it important from the exam point of view in english there is a concept called double negative what is this double negative in the same sentence or in the same clause you cannot use two negative expressions then it is known as double negative it is not correct write one example i'll give only the clause unless you don't work hard for you guys there is no audio problem those who are here audio is clear unless you don't work hard you will not get success you will not get success is this sentence right or wrong mark it wrong why is it wrong here we have two clauses underline unless you don't work hard one clause you will not get success you will not get success one clause but in the first clause how many negative words are there two negative words what is the first one unless what is the second one don't so what is the correct expression unless you work hard this you have to remember they have given many a time shall we go to the next one with hindsight it can be seen there are two terms you have to know first you write the word foresight below that you write hindsight have i skipped a question thank you yeah thank you the first anatomically modern europeans were the robust cro-magnons do you find any error here underline the word robust means uh, write the meaning strong very strong the first anatomically modern europeans were the robust cro-magnons absolutely no problem mark it right they show no signs of have evolved or they show no signs of having evolved from local neanderthal populations which one do you think is right having evolved so there's an error here strike up the word have change it to having evolved have you heard of that expression you have to respond 
having evolved, then it is right. So third one, then I'll give one pattern. By the turn of the century, the European world empires had reached their zenith. Any problem? Zenith means what? Peak. Nothing wrong. Based on that, what is the answer? A is right, C is right. So fourth option is the answer. Having evolved, that is an important expression. It is a non-finite verb. All of you write one sentence. Having completed the work, having completed the work, he left to the office. <coughs> Underline the expression, having completed. And below that you write non-finite verb. And if you want to go deep, it is a perfect participle. Perfect participle. So what is this non-finite verb and what is, what is a finite verb? What is a non-finite verb? A finite verb always has a tense. It has to agree with the subject in person and number. A non-finite verb does not have a tense. It doesn't have to agree with the subject in person and number. Those who have learned grammar, they know, but you are still learning, I suppose. Nothing to worry. But what is the meaning of this sentence? Tell me. Having completed the work, he left the office. How many actions are here? Two actions. Which one is the first action? He completed the work or he left the office? Completed the work, then he left the office. For the same situation, for the same context, we can use past perfect tense and past tense. Please write uh, below that one more sentence. He had, he had completed the work, he had completed the work before he left the office. Both the patterns mean the same. Having completed, he left the office. He had completed the work before he left the office. But here, underline, he had completed. Which tense is this? Write past perfect tense. Then you underline, he left the office. Which tense is that? So here, those who have learned tenses, they know. What is the use of past perfect tense? When there are two actions that happen in the past, one after the other, for the first action, we have to use past perfect. For the second action, we have to use past tense. So for the same context, you can say he had completed the work before he left the office. You can also say better expression, having completed the work, he left the office. Both mean the same. Both you have to remember. Shall I go to the next one? So is it uh, question number 18 now? With hindsight, it can be seen. Huh, please write two words. First you write the word foresight. Foresight refers to future or past. Brackets you write future. Then you write hindsight. Hindsight refers to brackets you write past. And biology students, they know these two terms because when we talk about animals, we use two terms, four limbs, hind limbs. Four limbs means legs in the front, limbs in the front, hind limbs at the back. Same meaning here also. With hindsight, it can be seen. Any error, grammatically speaking? Mark that one right. Expert stone workers used carefully shaped cylindrical lumps of print to produce dozen standard stone blades. We say dozen or a dozen. Dozen standard stone blades, better expression, to produce a dozen standard stone blades. That is a better expression. Write two sentences and per perhaps you understand. First you write the sentence, she gave me, she gave me dozen mangoes. She gave me dozen mangoes. Below that you write, she gave me a dozen mangoes, a dozen mangoes. So which one seems right, a dozen or a dozen mangoes? 
so here you don't see that second one is not right the third one the general was found dead nothing wrong with that you found someone dead at the pentagon with three bullet wounds wounds on the chest or in the chest so there is an error here on the chest no in the chest based on that how many errors here only one is right which one is that answer is only a how many of you have chosen only a raise your hands ah this side a lot of students you have chosen you have been doing very well good we'll go to the next one is that set over no illinois underline the letter s s is silent illinois was incorporated which tense is that so you have to respond past tense active voice or passive voice see these things you have to know for sure and the moment you read illinois was incorporated you have to know for sure the next second nothing wrong because it is in past tense passive voice that clarity is important otherwise you cannot handle illinois was incorporated as a city as a incorporated as what as a city any problem as a city when after its population increased any problem that means what a is right you have to ask questions at every stage second one a series of blasts occurred at an arms dump in brazzaville any problem here a series of blasts occurred underline one unit no problem where or which place at an arms dump underline the preposition at underline the preposition in what is the difference between these two when we refer the two prepositions to a place a small place we use at a large area we use in so at an arms dump nothing wrong in some place nothing wrong second one is also right third one russia commenced a major military build up near the russo ukrainian border i am rather curious how many of you have chosen c as a right one raise your hands you have chosen third one is right you have chosen among girls two that is really surprising generally what do you say russia or russian i myself had to cross check i thought not correct then something told me better you check once when i checked nothing wrong with that expression i appreciate those students uh, who have you have chosen that is great wonderful so nothing please underline russo ukrainian border tick that one no error whatsoever otherwise the sentence is right so what is the answer based on that a b and c how many of you have got a b and c ah you must have got and others you must have got fine that is the most difficult question in my opinion have we done with that how many questions four or five easy or difficult we'll check it out who has got all the five correct ah uh, difficult who has got four correct still difficult who has got three correct definitely difficult we'll go to the next one what are these about either a uh, word swap we have been getting regularly you should be able to handle effortlessly temperate forest right or wrong at the outset how many of you say it is right raise your hands not all i thought everyone would say that and i'm sure you have uh, you are preparing for banks both banks and ssc you have general awareness and uh, if you take the central line what is it equator and 23 and half degrees uh, north 23 and half degrees uh, south above it is temperate below it is temperate in between we use the word tropical you all know that so nothing wrong with that uh, combination temperate forest is also found in the southern eucalyptus no southern hemisphere is the right word underline the word eucalyptus underline the word hemisphere southern hemisphere as for example in the eastern australia temperate forest characterized by eucalyptus forest and open acacia woodland so what is answer based on that b c or c b 
second option is the answer easy or difficult 21 space time is any fuses model fuses model you have to stop there there is nothing like that so what is the next word mathematical model statistical model seems right let us replace <coughs> then what do you get space time is any mathematical model which fuses means combines the three dimensions of space and the one dimension of time into a four dimensional ma manifold so nothing wrong with other words what is the answer here b a or a b we'll go to the next one juno's trajectory underline the word trajectory write the meaning of that word direction or the path p a t h path something this goes with satellites usually rocket satellites the trajectory of the rocket means the path of the rocket it also goes with uh, planets asteroids all these is there any problem with this <coughs> that juno's trajectory used a gravity assist speed boost from earth years by something is wrong let us consider accomplished by seems right accomplished means what achieved by by what an earth flyby in october 2013 two years after seems perfect so what is the answer here b c which option is that uh, fourth option c b it is also easy to answer next one is uh, 23rd question number 20 that set is over how many questions three questions how many of you have got all the three correct mm, wonderful now you have become good at uh, word swap that's what it means and columns you got to be very careful because time taking and you got to be fast readers and here more than grammar contextual awareness matters a lot we'll see the first one <coughs> a crampon is a traction device that is attached to footwear to improve mobility on snow and ice during ice climbing seems right or wrong mark uh, please write a d one pair second one besides ice climbing you if you read you understand first one is right based on the second one besides ice climbing crampons are also used <coughs> for secure travel on snow and ice such as crossing glaciers snow fields and ice fields ascending ascending what snow slopes and scaling ice covered rock this also seems perfect so please write b f you have to check c and uh, whether it matches or not there are three main attachment systems for footwear what are the three main attachments step in what are you left with e can you use e here because the sentence talks about three things but only one after that there is no continuity so you cannot consider c e what is the answer based on that first option a d and b f how many of you spend time on uh, columns raise your hands while taking the mock test not too many we will go to the next one how many questions based on columns have you answered this one how many of you have answered this one in the handout do you have a uh, b e first option check and tell me in the handout first option what do you have b e second option second option what do you have b e then how how come you have chosen the answer it is beyond my comprehension it has to i will i will tell you why give me a second the answer is either one or two don't go beyond you cannot go beyond i repeat the answer is either one or first option or second option and if you have chosen first one or second one then it is a surprise for me it is beyond my comprehension how you could do that what is the reason in the handout you have uh, but you have done it online online you have bf or be pf okay then justify it <laughs> so what is the what is the answer you have chosen 
first option we'll check in snowy conditions transportation authorities may require snow chains or four wheel drive or special tires does it seem right b e or a e what seems right why no response in my opinion see i haven't i don't take the mock test so i don't have access to online uh, what you see but all that i do i get the handout when i check the handout i found the handout i got first option b e second option b f i uh, b e both options b e b e then i thought here it is uh, answer is a first option and they should have printed here it should be a e now imagine it is a e because two options with b e it cannot be like that forget about this one the handout says b e b e are you listening carefully then the answer has to be one of the two i thought some mistake while typing while uh, entering the data so answer has to be a e we'll go with that and we'll cross check so i have just read out a e seems convincing or not convincing underline the verb uh, require please go to a underline the verb require transportation authorities may require a few things what are those things one snow chains or four wheel drive or special tires in my opinion there is continuity and it seems right we'll go to b this can apply to all vehicles or only those without other traction aids such as here you cannot say four wheel what is the reason underline all vehicles this can apply to all vehicles or only those without other traction aids such as four wheel drive why can't you consider e here answer my question i told you to underline if you go to a it talks about authorities am i right authorities please listen carefully authorities means people persons yes or no when we talk about person we use the word drive can you give me a drive can you give me a ride you know these expressions but second one b talks about people or it talks about vehicles then underline the word drive and based on that particular word you cannot consider the combination b e do you understand what i say drive does not go with vehicles it goes with persons but b talks about what persons or vehicles so obviously b is not the answer then local requirements may be enforced at checkpoints or by other type of inspection seems right or wrong c d is also right if you go with my options first one is what c d second one is a e answer is what first option is the answer no second thoughts about that not because i have corrected you cannot consider other options i would like to know because the way you are looking at me i would like to know which option have you chosen p e but i have given the explanation convinced or not convinced convinced fine not convinced i can't help it we'll go to the next one but no second thoughts you cannot use the word drive with vehicles what are these about misspelled or inappropriate easy to answer what is the first word here enormous what is the spelling of enormous mm. not n o u r n o r easy to answer you don't have to go beyond but have a look at the words any word you have to learn significant means what important please write the meaning evidence simple word creature simple word yesterday you got one word a uh, living creature what is the word i gave entity but in an organization some people are not important what is the word for those people non entity that you have to remember we'll go to the next one is it astonishes underline the word astonishes means surprises please write the meaning of that word astonish means surprise a lot it astonishes me how easily and often we are dismissed anything wrong with the word astonish dismiss as racist particularly in intellectual circles intellectual no problem particularly no problem so what is the answer here 
E is what? I respect the fifth option sometimes. But there is one important word here. You have written the meaning of uh, uh, astonish. Uh, write the word intellect. First you write the word intellect. And write the meaning. Intellect means knowledge. Then you answer my question. Intellectual means what? A person with knowledge. Person with knowledge, you call that person intellectual. He is an intellectual. She is an intellectual. But there are certain other words you have to know. First you write the word genius. Everyone knows this word. Yes? You are all geniuses. So you know. No, I am serious. Everyone is a born genius. Only thing you should know how to extract, how to harness, how to bring it out. And uh, write the word. Uh, the words I am going to write you may not know. Important from the exam point of view. Please write the word. Polymath. Polymath means nothing to do with maths. An intellectual, a person with a lot of knowledge, a genius, polymath. Another word, write the word. They have given these words many a time. High bro. He is a high bro. He is a polymath. He is an intellectual. He is a genius. They all mean the same. A lot of knowledge. Don't think of uh, eyebrows, high bro. Oh, that's why you, some girls were smiling. And sometimes what happens, some people, they have a lot of knowledge and they can talk on any topic, anytime, anywhere with anyone. Then we use one expression, we say, he is a walking encyclopedia. Have you heard of that? Please write the expression. You all know the word encyclopedia. Uh, please write the expression, walking encyclopedia. Walking encyclopedia. Encyclo modern spelling p e d i a but old one p a e encyclopedia what is this encyclopedia if you go to any library you come across two encyclopedias one is uh, encyclopedia britannica from the uk the other one encyclopedia americana from the us these are volumes not one book 24 books or 30 books, each one is this thick. And these, if you take these books in an alphabetical order, any concept, anything you have information, that is known as an encyclopedia. How many of you visit uh, libraries regularly, not our library? I am talking about uh, something like a British library, American library, Central Library, no one. Then uh, you might not have seen, have you ever seen uh, an encyclopedia? Perhaps, uh, but you got the meaning. That is important. So someone has a lot of knowledge. What do we say? Walking encyclopedia. We'll go to the next one. Rian has an eye for detail and a knack. Underline the word knack. Knack means a skill. Write the meaning. Knack. Knack can be positive, can be negative. But here, positive. Skill. Technique. Also write the word technique. Ryan has an eye for detail and a knack for spinning a yearn is not the right word, inappropriate word. Please mark it wrong and write the meaning of that word. A strong desire, a strong desire for something. If you have a strong desire for something, then we say yearning, yearning for something. Desire, you can also write a strong longing for something. Have you heard of this word longing? Longing for something means you are waiting for something. You want to have something. Longing for success means you are waiting for success. So that's an important word. It doesn't go with this context. But exact word, I myself could not guess. Uh, what is the word you have thought of? It cannot. Uh, it, uh, very good. I appreciate it. It has to be. All of you write the word yarn. It, this word goes with the context. I appreciate you. Very good. I was thinking of uh, another word, but I could not check. Yarn is the right word. Other words, what are the other words here? Uh, lose. Uh, underline the word lose. Uh, important from the exam point of view. First you write the word lose. What is the spelling I have written? L-O-S-E. 
Here, is it a verb or a noun? Please write verb. Lose, lost, lost. It is a verb. And what is the noun form of this? Write the word loss. Loss is a noun form. Please write noun. Something is going off the track. Then you write the word lose. Lose shirt, tight shirt. So what is which part of speech is it? Please write adjective. L O S E lose. He he loses regularly. Means what? Don't lose your valuables. Verb. What is the spelling then? L O S E. He wears a loose shirt. What is the spelling? Double O S E. He has incurred losses in his business. Loss is what? Noun. All the three you have to know. Shall I go to the next one? It's already three o'clock. A lovely whale or a lovely wall, based on the context. Whale is not the right one here. The right word is, please write a lovely wall of greensward called Princess Street Gardens. Separates, not, no problem. Bridges, no problem. Shallow valley, no problem. I'm doing it fast because it's already three. First word is not correct. The right word is what? According to the above, we have a new set. According to the above directions, when planting daffodil bulbs, which of the following conditions is not necessary? A very short paragraph based on that questions. So here, sunny location. Underline, not necessary. Sunny location, necessary. Not correct. Well-drained soil, necessary. Not correct. Proper placement of bulbs in soil, necessary. Proper fertilization, not mentioned. So what is the answer here? The last one, according to the above directions, which of the following is true? Daffodils do best in sandy soil, mentioned. Well-drained soil, so mark it wrong. Daffodil bulbs should be planted in autumn for spring blooming. Mentioned uh, which time? Have they mentioned the time? No, so mark it wrong. It is possible to plant daffodil bulbs upside down. Where has it been mentioned? No, here all of you underline the bulb should be placed in the hole pointed side up and root side down. Root is always down, that is, it is then it is not upside down. Imagine uh, roots are on the top, then we use the term upside down. So this is also, underline the expression upside down, mark it wrong. Daffodil bulbs require daily watering, right or wrong? What does it say? Does not mention, daily not mention. The key says third option, that is not correct. Answer is, how many of you have chosen the fifth option? That means you all respect the key. Don't respect the key all the time. Beyond any doubt, the answer is the fifth option. As simple as that. So that's it. Who has got... Uh,